Hello, Happy New Year. I hope that your 2022 has been off to a brilliant start so far. Today I've got a little bit of a different video and actually uh, this is going up a little bit earlier than my regular scheduled videos because I wanted to talk all about how I'm planning to do a low buy for the next six months. I mentioned on Instagram towards the start of December that I was thinking about uh, doing a low buy just for the first half of the year and whether or not you would be interested to see me talk about my journey and also the rules that I'm planning to kind of have in place throughout it and overwhelmingly the answer was yes so I suspect I am not alone in wanting to do this um, at least for part of the year so that is going to be the main topic of today's video now I'm going to split this video into three parts the first being why I want to do a low buy and also my approach to shopping the second part will be the rules or at least the structure of my low buy and how I plan to carry that out over the next six months and finally I'm just going to talk through how I anticipate my monthly check-ins will look like and what I'm going to talk about in those check-ins and actually if there's anything you think I should be also discussing further to what I'm planning then please tell me down in the comment section below and if you are new here welcome to my channel my name is Jamie Lee and I talk a lot about fashion and share a lot of styling tips okay so why a low buy? If you're a long time subscriber or have just watched some of my vlogs, then you may know my husband and I are planning a rather extensive home renovation this year, which hopefully will not be too far away. And I am gonna be sharing that entire process. But as you can imagine, home renovations are really expensive. And while we already have a really, really healthy savings, I want to put a lot of my energy into building that up further, as well as setting money aside for any additional furniture purchases that we're going to need to make because some of the furniture we have, for example, our outdoor dining table, it is literally falling apart. And we have actually earmarked the table and uh, seating that we would like to replace that with, but we're waiting for for the new deck to be built before we actually go through with that purchase. So that's kind of, I would say, the main catalyst and the reason why I really wanted to do a low buy, really more so that I could save a lot more money to put into our home, which to me is a real investment. Uh, and you may have noticed actually over the last 12 months that I've stepped away from using the word investment when it comes to a purchase for my wardrobe because I no longer see it the same way. And I do worry that it is sometimes used as an excuse, it can be quite triggering in terms of of purchasing a really expensive item. So you've probably seen my language has shifted and I use the word like I bought something really expensive, I splurged on this because that's the way that I see it these days. The other reason is that I feel really content with what I have in my wardrobe. <laughs> I actually have a really abundant closet. I have what I consider my core capsule but then I have so much more clothing than that. And part of that is down to what I do for part of my work uh, and it does mean that I have a lot more clothing entering my life than the average person and because of that, I do just have more in my wardrobe. So I really want to try and limit what is coming into my closet because I really want to love and cherish the things that I already own. So that for me is also really, really important as well. Now, before I share my rules or at least how I'm planning to approach my low buy, I thought it was important to also talk through how I approach shopping or at least adding anything new to my closet in particular because that's really the main area that I'm planning to curtail with this low buy. So I'm someone who tries to be really conscientious and considered and also pragmatic about what they add to their wardrobe. So for me, this means that I want to be adding things that work well with the color palette I already have that are different to what I already own. Keeping in mind that, as I said before, I do have an abundance, so nothing is technically a need. It's more desires, but trying to manage that in a uh, mindful way, at least as much as possible, while still being able to effectively do my job. I have this strategy that I kind of developed a few years ago called the 30 day shopping rule. I have a blog post about it, which I'm going to link down in the description box below if you would like to go and have a read. Essentially the crux of this was that I I wanted to make myself wait and really think hard and critically about purchases before going through with them. So I would add something to my wish list and then I would wait at least 30 days before I actually went through with the purchase. And part of this was this realization that a lot of items don't actually sell out straight away. They're usually hanging around for a really long time. And I'd gotten into this mentality when I lived in Wellington, uh, especially when I was shopping at Karen Walker, because they would have very, very minimal numbers of 
small sizes. So if you wanted something, you literally had to buy it straight away, otherwise there was another person waiting in the wings to purchase it, and that really triggered a lot of impulse purchases for me. Um, so since moving to Australia, my whole view and perspective on that has completely changed and it's a much healthier way to approach my wardrobe. So I'll wait for 30 days, and over that time I'll return to the item, I'll see if I'm continuing to think about it, and quite often, or more often than not, I realize it's just not right for me. Maybe it's just something that felt a little bit frivolous, or it's not really going to be a good fit with my wardrobe. Maybe it's a really bold color that I know I don't wear. It's a printed piece, which I don't typically wear very often. I tend to wear a lot of block colors. Or maybe it's just something that really gives into my fantasy self. And that's something I have definitely been known to shop for before my fantasy self. Uh, and I think it's very easy to get caught up in that. So that's kind of my 30 day shopping rule. And often it'll be months, sometimes even years before I will actually even make the purchase. I'm just thinking about it in the back of my mind. Now recently I noticed that the quantity or the rate at which I was buying new things that I had been waiting 30 days or more, quite often a lot longer to buy, uh, was on on the rise and it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, if you did follow my Black Friday purchases, I ended up sending a lot of things back because they were things that I wasn't able to actually see or preview in person. So I used the discount as an opportunity to either add it to my wardrobe as an item that I'd loved for and admired for a really long time and B, actually see whether it was right for me. Um, and I think three of the four items I bought from Shopbop, which was quite an expensive order, they went back. Uh, so I try to be pragmatic and really, really critical when I do add anything new to my wardrobe. Another thing I did also want to highlight is the fact that I am in a position where I do receive gifted items. It's not just across fashion, it's beauty as well. And for me, managing that and also ensuring that I'm still sharing with you the very genuine process of buying things as a regular consumer that to me is a tricky balance to navigate and it's something I've really been trying to figure out over the years I don't only want to share things that I've been gifted because uh, I do think that despite me trying to be as critical and as honest and transparent about my thoughts as I possibly can and everything that I share with you unless I say so otherwise is something that I do genuinely like I am also mindful that there may be a slight bias there and I really want Want to try and counterbalance that with actual purchases that I have made so that I can share my own experience that you might similarly have had if you were buying direct from the brand yourself. So all of this is to say that I feel like I have a lot in my wardrobe and I want to reduce the amount of money that I'm spending but not only that I want to reduce the amount that is coming into my wardrobe through uh, gifting or PR as well. Now I'm going to finally talk through my rules so well done if you've made it this far I feel like I have hold on for a very very long time. So as part of my low buy I really wanted to do something that was incredibly realistic. So I'm going to be focusing on fashion and beauty uh, just because as I said we're doing a home renovation I actually don't buy a lot of homewares and we very rarely buy furniture because they are what I consider to be more of an investment purchase. They're things that you purchase with the intent of owning for a really long time unless they wear out. Um, our house is almost going to double in size so it does mean that there is going to be some furniture we have to buy but we've been considering these purchases for a really long time and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be doing the saving. So um, under my low buy I'm going to allow myself to purchase up to two items per month and these are fashion purchases so if it was a new blazer or a new pair of shoes or a handbag those would all fall under my low buy. I'm also going to set myself a budget as well so any purchases I make have to fall underneath that budget. Um, I don't really think that it's relevant to share the number just because everyone's financial situation is different and your goals might be different to mine uh, but I am going to allow myself to carry over any leftover spend to the following month. So I guess technically if I wanted, I could save up for, you know, the entire six month period and then treat myself to something really nice in the final month or to something really nice <laughs> things uh, in the final month. Uh, so that is kind of going to be the main part of my uh, low buy. I am planning not to purchase any new beauty products. I actually have a stash of some cleansers and moisturizers. I tend to have a couple on the go at once. So I want to actually use all of those up. 
Unless I run out of a face wash or a moisturizer, because I consider those to be the two key facets of my uh, skincare routine, I do not need to buy any other beauty products. I don't need any eyeshadow palettes, I've got enough. I don't need any lipsticks, nothing. So I'm planning not to purchase any beauty and also say no, unless it is something I am really interested in or curious about to any PR products. Um, I do occasionally get the PR send out, which I am unaware about. So um, obviously that's something I won't be able to control, but I am hoping to manage it in that way. In terms of other replacements, I will allow myself to replace bras and and undies if I need to. I do have a couple pairs of knickers which literally are almost worn out. <laughs> I'm the type of person who will wear things until they really really do need to uh, be replaced. We actually have in our, our um, drawer with cloths we've got nappies that my mum used on me, reuse, you know, cloth nappies that she used to use on me when I was a baby so over 30 years ago and we use them for cleaning because they are just the the best cleaning rags I've ever come across and one is falling apart but I just can't let myself get let go of it so uh, that is that is probably the only area that I'll allow myself other replacements I don't need any socks if the last few years have taught me anything I barely wear tights in the winter I've got one pair and that's enough for me now I do have a few exceptions under my low buy the first one is around gifts now I'm not going to limit myself in terms of budget when it comes to gifts for loved ones we have quite a few of them celebrating birthdays in the first half of the year so I still want to be able to treat them to something special it's more about managing my own spending when it comes to treating myself however my birthday is on the 1st of February and I never really make a point of buying myself a specific birthday present but if I do see something and it falls kind of outside of my rules, I will allow myself to potentially purchase it as a birthday present. The other exception that I will make is that I actually need to replace a pair of shoes and they're these Vanelli two-tone pumps. I've been talking about replacing these for so long. I've had these shoes for over four years now and they are so worn that I've almost got holes in the toes. I actually didn't bother getting these ones resold because I wore them on a few days when we had torrential rain in Sydney and I've literally destroyed the shoes, the interior of the shoes and I have not looked after them at all. So I wouldn't mind buying a new pair. I actually had uh, gone into the Chanel boutique in uh, November to try on the actual Chanel shoes and I didn't like them. I didn't like the colour, it felt a little bit too yellow for me whereas these ones are a little bit more uh, of a darker beige and then I didn't like the fact that the heel height was so high and I also found them really narrow. I have wide feet and they just weren't very comfortable for me so I much prefer these ones from Vanelli which is much better for my bank account so I was really really happy actually when uh, I realized that when I was in the store so those are kind of going to be my exceptions I do have a couple of other sort of uh, things that I would like to prioritize when I am making purchases under my low buy so the first is that if I'm making any fashion purchases ideally I want them to be pre-loved purchases I buy a lot of things secondhand uh, it's actually one of my favorite ways to shop because you can get some real gems and you can really extend your dollar further uh, I probably do most of my shopping pre-loved on the real real or on eBay the other one is that I would really be interested in when I am buying new or even when I'm buying pre-loved to try to prioritize more Australian brands. Uh, this is something I've been asked to do a lot so I definitely want to be able to share more Aussie brands with you and New Zealand brands uh, as the year kind of goes on and uh, this would be a good way to do it I think. So I suppose that's kind of a look at what my low buy is going to entail and the reason why I actually want to undertake one for the first six months of this year. I think it's really good to have a little bit of structure and uh, it'll be nice to start this year with a new goal and something to work towards. Uh, I'm someone who is really really focused on financial goals um, and I really like to achieve them. I actually get a little bit obsessive, my poor husband. <laughs> so uh, I, I feel like this is going to be something which is going to be a really positive outcome for me and uh, yeah I'm, I mean I'm so excited to see what's going to happen with our house and the transformation with it. Now I am going to do a monthly check-in at the end of each month. So the first one will probably go up either at the very end of this month 
or at the very start of February. So keep an eye out around then. This will be supplementary or a bonus video that will be outside of my regular Sunday scheduled upload. Now, in these updates, I'm planning to talk about how the month has gone, any challenges that I have faced, uh, the way that I have been feeling perhaps in relation to shopping and my wardrobe, and also, if you are interested, I can also share with you the items that I did buy if I bought anything. And I will, of course, share any slip-ups if there are any, which, fingers crossed, there won't be. I really want to try and stick to this as much as possible. Uh, but I do think it's important to also be kind to yourself and realize we're only human. We all do make mistakes. But yeah, that is kind of what I suspect they will entail and what they will look like. Maybe I will just share as a percentage how much of my monthly budget I spent, if that's of interest. So yeah, that is how I plan to kind of structure my low buy and what the low buy videos moving forward will look like. I can maybe share any tips and tricks as well that I find myself picking up along the way too, if that's helpful. But I feel like it'll be a great community to uh, kind of, I guess, share the experience with those of you who are also doing your own low buy, whatever your rules look like. But thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else that you maybe think I should add, as I said earlier, please let me know in the comments section below. I wanna know if you are doing a low buy as well so that we can really be each other's cheerleaders throughout this process. And yeah, that is kind of going to be it from me. I'm going to stop waffling now because I've been talking for far too long, but thank you so much for spending some of your day with me, especially at the very start of the new year when I know many of us are spending a lot of time with our families or we're on holiday. And yeah, I will see you next time with a brand new video. I've got a couple coming up with my favorite purchases for 2021 and also my most worn items of 2021 as well. And there's actually a little bit of crossover. So I'll see you guys then in my next one. See you soon. Bye.